Hello, friends. Welcome to Aslan Speaks, episode 24, Spirituality for Beginners. I want to share this first before I begin the, the main message of this video. It's that I am not a master. I'm not all-knowing. I'm not a guru. I'm just an average human being walking the spiritual path just like you. And a lot of those, a lot of anybody who's watching this video, you're probably seeking out the spiritual path. You know, because most people who are not seeking to live spiritually or even understand what spirituality is, probably will just skim over this video. But for those who are watching this, there's probably a message. Uh, this message is for you in some way. So on my path, I've discovered a lot, and my goal is to help share that information with others. I'm trying my best to help humanity out. I may get things wrong, but at least I'm trying. I'm doing my best, guys. Uh, so know this. Never let someone tell you what you should believe. Yes. Never let someone tell you what you should believe. Never let even me. Like, don't let me tell you what to believe. You should always uh, find or believe in what resonates with you guys. Re what resonates with your heart. What touches your heart. What touches your soul. What, what, what makes you feel whole and complete? You know, if there's any type of information that reaches you and instantly your intuition or your discernment uh, sends off the red, red alert or the, a red flag, then you probably are not going to resonate with that information, but you want to find information that you resonate with. And then anything that your discernment says no to, then don't follow that information. Trust yourself. You are your own master. You guys, yes, you are your own master. When you walk the spiritual path, you discover and you start the process of self-mastery to become the master. Ooh, I love that. So never let someone tell you what you should believe. Or, you know, that's one of the crucial things. For thousands of years, yes, for thousands, thousands of years, certain people and religions forced their beliefs and ideas onto other people. Maybe, you know, like, maybe that is why there's so much division in our, in this modern era. Because for thousands or even hundreds of years, people have put their beliefs or religions or ideas and pinned them against other people. And they're constantly in battle. And they forgot what one of my favorite teachers or one of the ultimate masters or one of the ultimate gurus taught. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. That means, like, I, I believe a certain way, so I want people to just accept me, accept me and not attack me for my beliefs or ideas. And so I want to, sh so I want to be loved and respected. And so I, want, I should love and respect others. You know, half, or like, I don't even know the actual, I might get this wrong, but like one-third Earth's population is Christian. And one-third of Earth's uh, population is Christian means that They've grown up learning about the teachings of Jesus and learning to do unto others. And we have all this turmoil and conflict in the world. If one third of the population believes in the golden rule of doing unto others, why have not the world has changed? Because maybe we're, even though we believe in Jesus or the Christian faith, we are not living by example, like to our fullest anyway. We got we to gotta live and walk the path if it's Christianity or whatever spiritual or whatever that resonates with you. You got to live that. Be it. Be example of it. Don't just speak it, but every day, every moment, live that. Often in life, we, we come across some real spiritual knowledge and we're like, oh, I'm going to incorporate that into my life. But then we choose to be spiritual on a certain day and then the rest of the week we're out partying and drinking. To walk a spiritual path, to, to become the true self-master, you have to be spiritual or tapped into listening to your soul or the Holy Spirit within you every moment and every day and let the Holy Spirit guide you every moment and every day. Guide your thoughts, thinking, and actions, deeds. It has, you know, every day. You got to be spiritual every day. With that little tangent out of the way, one must learn to walk their own path. Yes, you must learn to walk your own path. One must find out for yourself 
your truth. You must you must discover what's what resonates with you. You must discover your truth. Because my truth, yes, my truth is different than your truth. My my path is different than yours. As humans, we are all we are all in search of God and the divine. But, but we all have different ways or different paths to find God or the divine. So let's learn not to judge others because their truth differs from your truth. Or that their path to spirituality is different than your path or different than yours. When we walk the spiritual path or when we decide to seek out spirituality, we must learn to embrace all of God's children with love. Even if you disagree on what and who they believe in, you must embrace them with love, respect, and kindness. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. For we all have our own path in life to find God or the divine. So let's just learn to embrace everyone with love. I'm not here. We should not learn to be like, oh, this is what you believe in. Oh, and then start attacking them for that. No, guys. Well, at least that's my perspective. You know, you can disagree, but still love somebody and respect them. Let them just acknowledge that, hey, they're uh, on their own path. Acknowledge that you're divine and that they're divine. And that we're all uh, on our own way of seeking out the divine or God. And just like, keep it at that. It's not about, yes, it is, it's not about what priests or gurus tell you to believe in. You know, or that uh, that the social influence and the, that famous person telling you, hey, this is how you, I believe like this, so you should believe like that. To find your truth, you must walk your own path and discover and align to what resonates with you. Yes, what resonates with you. There's certain information that, or a video content, or a speaker, or whatever, or a master, or a guru, or a priest will speak and it just resonates with you. It speaks to your soul. And you know that, hey, this is, you're, you're in tune or in harmony with that information. And then there's information, ideas or beliefs that you're like, whoa, this is too much for me and it does not resonate with me. And you, you choose not to allow it into your being. So you must find and discover what resonates with you. My friends, I took uh, world religion in college and I learned and studied many religions and beliefs. I discovered that there I discovered that, that that there is a lot of beauty. Yes, there's a lot of beauty in other religions. And it took me because I was dead set on because uh, I was raised Christian. I was dead set. I'm stuck in my Christian beliefs. And when I was younger, I was programmed, or I had the idea or belief that my like, hey, all those other religions are nonsense. But it took me op keeping an open mind and studying world religion. To change my perspective and view on religion. I, I discovered that there's a lot of beauty and wisdom in, in others, other cultures and other religions. Uh, I found, and also when I'm studying all this, I found a lot of similarities. So when I began my journey on the spiritual path, I started to incorporate a lot of the things that I learned. So I suggest, like I said, stated earlier, to keep an open mind. Keep an open mind and open heart. I want to mention this as well. This is one of like the biggest pitfalls a person can fall into when walking the spiritual path. And so many people fall in this pitfall. Even like famous people or even well-known spiritual people fall into this pitfall. And I want to make this so obvious that you learn not to do it yourself. It's up to you. You can do it yourself if you want, but I, uh, even I have fallen victim to this pitfall, and I've fallen deep into it before. The biggest pitfall I learned to walk the spiritual path is judgment. I'm going to repeat that. Judgment. The idea of that your spiritual belief is better and more superior than others. So you attack or you try to dis discredit someone else's spiritual beliefs. We should not be discrediting or or uh, or attacking other people. We must learn to 
uh, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Let's learn not to attack others or think you're better than others. Let's not reach out in judgment, but reach out in love. Woo, yeah, that was a little saucy right there. Let's not reach out in judgment, but reach out in love. Easier said than done. So many of us, one of our uh, conditioning growing up is you don't like something or whatever, we instantly judge it. If something doesn't resonate with us or, hey, that person's belief or idea or that person's behavior is going against the way I was taught or going against society's way, way of or society's rules, well, we instantly judge them. We have to get rid of that mentality of judgment because in a way, when you judge others, you're actually judging yourself. You know, when you attack others, you're actually attacking yourself. So reach out and love, my friends. You know, there, I don't know, there's, there's a time and place for everything. So what is spirituality? Well, this is my definition or what I've grown to understand what spirituality is for me, at least. This is, you know, if it resonates with you, it resonates. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Being spiritual or, or, so being spiritual depends on you. As a person's spirituality is shaped and molded by a, a person's own pre-programmed belief structures that they were taught at an early age. A lot of us were taught by our parents or our grandparents or those in our, in our church or those in our schools or in our society or the area and culture that we grew up in. Those ideas and beliefs that they were taught were, were passed on to you and then they, that, that is like your uh, operating system when you're a kid and you grow up and you, you're, you get shaped and molded by those belief, belief structures or those pre-programmed or even societies, like each, everywhere, every culture or area you grew up has a different society rules. And that is what is, is instilled in you. And so that's what, you know, so your spirituality is shaped off of that at first. For example, yes, for example, I was raised, I was raised, ooh, kick the camera stand. I was raised in the Christian faith. You know, I was baptized Catholic, raised in a Lutheran church, and then I was went to a non-denomination uh, non church. I've been all over to all churches, and what I've learned is I started trusting my intuition, and certain places, even certain churches I walked into, just I felt like uh, screaming and running out of there because it just did not, did not resonate with me. So trust your own intuition, trust uh, when you're being spiritual, you listen to your soul and your soul will guide you. So I was raised in the Christian faith and a lot of my spiritual knowledge is based on Christianity. But over the years from my seeking of wisdom and knowledge as seeking out awakening and enlightenment, my understanding of spirituality is, has grown and evolved over the years. My state of awareness and understanding has grown over the years because I spent years working on myself to get to where the state I am now. And that's one of the keys in, uh, to, to become yourself, to, to the, the master self-mastery. Is one, you have to work on yourself. You have to clean out the junk inside of you that holds you back. That's the emotion, that's the negative trauma, that's the negative thoughts, the negative actions and deeds that you do, the negative habits. And you got to start like slowly healing your in yourself and learning to become a better version of yourself better and better and better version of yourself you start learn trying striving for self mastery and over time you become the master or you become the apprentice of your life and you start changing it and that's what a step one of the ways to help you expand your awareness and understanding is doing like prayer, or learning, learning wisdom and knowledge, uh, or even meditation. Meditation changed my life, guys. It really did. I, I'm a big uh, supporter of meditation. To look within, to go within yourself, to find the answers. And that's how you. That's one of the ways you start. Connect, you're like, well, you say spirituality is listening to your soul or your Holy Spirit within you. But how do I do that? I don't hear nothing when I listen. Well, one of the things, the key is. 
a lot of us are not silent enough. We we haven't even trained ourselves to look within, and that's what meditation does. It helps you look within yourself. It trains you. It trains you to silent silence your mind or your ego mind and start listening to that voice that comes from the inside of you, the the voice of intuition or Holy Spirit, and you can start diff, the learning to diff, uh, the difference between the two. But for you know. Like, I didn't know nothing about, I didn't start meditating until I was 20-something years old. And for years, and I tried, you know, for so years, I was not plugged into the divine that is in, within me. I was I was not plugged into source energy. Well, we are subconsciously, but consciously I wasn't. And it took years upon years of practice of understanding and working on myself to plug myself back into uh, the divine consciously. So if you want to expand your awareness and your understanding, first learn to look within or start, start working on yourself. Begin to walk the path of self-mastery. So being spiritual, yes, being spiritual is you basically tapping into your own spirit within yourself. Instead of finding answers from priests, gurus, social influencers, or like celebrities, you tap into your own Holy Spirit within you for the answers. You let your spirit guide your life. You let the Holy Spirit within you or that divine spark that animates your body guide your, guide your beliefs and your actions. It guides your life. But spirituality can't just be put in one box. The concept of spirituality is huge. Yes, guys, it is huge. Spirituality is a broad concept of a belief in something beyond yourself or beyond the self. It may involve religion traditions centering on the beliefs, the belief in a higher power. But it can also involve a holistic belief in an individual connection to others and to the world as a whole. Yeah, so spirituality is different for everybody. Some may, their spirituality is just being one with nature and being out in, in tune with nature. Or some, or some spirituality is linked to just a certain religion. Some are, uh, could be just based off of love and treating and being kindness and love to everybody. Or what, some could be linked to the, the planet or Gaia. In general, it includes a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves. We all have this, well not all of us, but mo most people have this 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 question that there's something out there. What is my purpose? Why am I here on this earth? That there's something more grand to discover. And we all know that there's something bigger out there in the universe, that there's a higher power. We just intuitively know that. That is our soul. That is our spirit saying, hey guys, pay attention here. There's, there is a higher power. There is a divine energy or whatever you want to call it, or divine forces working in a bigger scale and it's time to open up your eyes your spirit speaks to you all the time that the divine energy that animates your body that guides you it speaks and and it's and it's up to you to work with that energy within yourself to make it uh, more powerful Whew. wow this is some amazing stuff guys so we all have that search for the meaning to life. Like, what what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? The search for, to tap into the divine and to search for the higher power. That we, we are all searching for that universal human experience that touches us all. That, hey, tapping into that divineness. People may describe a spiritual experience experience as a sacred or trans transcendent or simply a deep sense of aliveness or an interconnectedness. You know, some like guys, one of the times I had a partial Kundalini awakening and man, I became one with everything and it was just so powerful. And in my book, Hidden Knowledge, Gain Wisdom, I go into detail about that partial Kundalini experience. About connecting to like the oneness of everything. It was it was very powerful. So we all have this interconnectedness or to feel truly alive. Some may find that the spiritual life is linked to their association with a church, 
temple, mosque, or synagogue. Like I stated earlier, some spirituality or some person's spiritual journey or spiritual path leads them down uh, the path of mainstream religion. And that may be a church, temple, mosque, synagogue, rabbi, priest. You know, others, others may pray or find comfort in a personal relationship with God or a higher power. So instead of having going to a church or a priest or rabbi for to connect with God, you tap into God or you com you comfort yourself with your own personal relationship with God or the or higher power or, or source consciousness, whatever you want to call it or label it. Still, others seek meaning through their connection to nature or art or creativity. You know, some of the great like some really good, powerful spiritual people, they they tap into that 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 spirit within them through their artwork. You know, you see, I've at least me personally, I've seen some ma amazing creative people, and then they create something like a piece of art or a painting, and and people are like, how did you do that? And they basically tap into the divine within them, and they're inspired to create that. It happens to me all the time where. I write something or I do something or create a video and then I watch it or look at it and I'm like, whoa, where did that, that came, where did that, where did that creativity, creativity come from? And then I realized it was me tapping into something greater than my meat suit. It was me tapping into my Holy Spirit or the, the divineness within me. So we all have that connection to art, to, to nature or art. Like your sense of purpose, your personal definition of spirituality may change throughout your life adapting to your own experience and relationships my friends yes my friends i like to call you my friends because i look at everybody or i try to look at everybody as uh, a part of me or 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 they're all god's children so you are all my brothers and sisters my friends my definition of spirituality has changed Many, many times. Because when one seeks enlightenment, their awareness and connection to the divine grows and grows. So my understanding grows and grows. So as my understanding grows, I evolve and my beliefs or programs that I've instilled in my mind have ch changed and evolved. So, so walking the spiritual path can help lead you to something greater that connects all beings to each other. Maybe to the universe itself. Maybe that's what we're here for. Is that when we tap into the spirit within us or to walk the spiritual path, we learn that maybe we're part of the universe, that we're tapping into the, the universe itself. As beloved, as above, so below, as within, so without. You know, like you are the universe, the universe is within you, and the universe is without you, with is outside of you. You were all. Woo, guys. This is some uh, knowledge drop. Boom. Knowledge, you know, some dropping some insights on you. On this path, you may discover that there is an ongoing existence after death. Basically meaning there's life after death. One may even strive to answer, answer questions about the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Especially when one person seeks out spirituality or to... They ask themselves that a lot. At least that was my mind. I'm like, what is the meaning of life? Why am I here on this planet? And one of the things when I learned, looked within, I'm like, my reason I'm here is to help others, to help them heal emotionally, physically. If I can heal them, you know, I will try to heal them. And sometimes healing is giving people the power to heal themselves, the information to heal themselves. Also to share wisdom and knowledge, to help expand you know, it took me years to expand my awareness. So maybe I just me through my content or video, I can help others expand their awareness. And then by them expanding expand their awareness or awakening awakening spiritually, they can help wake awaken others. A person a person may begin to see how we as humanity are connected to connected to each other. We, we, my friends, we like I said, we're like I. At least in my opinion, we're all God's. We're all God's children, so we're all connected. We're all brothers and sisters. We will discover truths about the universe and other mysteries of the human existence. So that's like when you seek out spirituality. This, this is such a big concept, my friends. So here, yes, here, you guys ready for this? 
here are here are some signs of spirituality. Whew. Spirituality is not a single path or belief system. Like I stated earlier, one must find their own truth. It's up to you guys. You must forge your own path and of spirituality and discover your own truth. One must find what resonates with them. There are many ways to experience spirituality. And the benefits of spirituality... So, oh. so there's many ways to experience spirituality. And the benefits of the spirituality experience... Or some people may evolve the belief in a higher power or even specific religion practices. Some people do ayahuasca ceremonies, you know, or, you know, there, there's so many, the cultures and beliefs are so, so in depth, my friends. For, some, for, some, for others who are seeking spirituality, it may involve experiencing a sense of connection to a higher state or a sense of interconnectedness with the rest of humanity or nature. You know, so I just want to, I repeat myself because it's important for this information to get planted into your consciousness. But here are some signs of spirituality. Asking deep questions about topics such as suffering and what happens after death. Deepening connection with others, other people, having a like in-depth connection with others. Experiencing compassion and empathy for others. Experiencing feeling of interconnectedness. Feeling of awe and wonder. Seeking happiness beyond material possessions or other external rewards. Seeking meaning and purpose. Wanting to make the world a better place. Begin to add different spiritual practices into your life, such as prayer and meditation. Yeah, guys, there were some of the signs. There are some some of those signs might not even, some people may not experience any of those signs. So, how does a person begin to walk the spiritual path? In order to walk the spiritual path, one must search within their own soul. There must be a want. To discover your truest self and a want to understand life more. There must be a want to awaken spiritually. There must be a want to awaken spiritually. A person must learn to tap into the divine within themselves. Instead of listening to others, listen to your soul. I'm going to repeat that. Instead of listening to others, listen to Listen to your soul. It's crucial, my friends. Listen to your heart. So listen to your soul and listen to your heart. Spiritual awakening is not an overnight venture. It's not an overnight process. It's simply a term that helps define the beginning of your initiation on the spiritual path. When, you, when one is initiated on this path, it can be a difficult it can be difficult and a struggle at first. Trust me, guys. I've went through my ups and downs dealing and learning about spirituality. You know, there's some uh, rabbit holes of spirituality that I went down that was purposely misleading for per people. And there are some that are awesome. And so you learn and develop what resonates with you and doesn't uh, resonate with you, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Because your life will, when you start walking the spiritual path, your life will drastically change. At least that's what happened to me in my case. I have changed so much over the years because I chose to walk spiritually. And because I chose this path, my life started becoming better and better. And I started manifesting all my wants, dreams, and desires. And it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty amazing. When we undergo a spiritual awakening, when we go up... Uh, I'm getting tongue-tied here. When we undergo a spiritual awakening... We literally wake up to life. The spiritual awakening process is complex and it different and it's different for everybody. You know, everybody has something a different trigger that will awaken them to uh, the spiritual path. Or a certain you know, it's just different for everybody, you know. 
In reality, it cannot be fit. They cannot be fit into a single box or a neat little box. Therefore, it's possible that you may experience experience a spiritual awakening differently than others. So, what is a spiritual awakening? What? Well, you'll learn this when you begin to walk the spiritual path that you begin to awaken the spirit within you, or you awaken your soul. It's always there, but you, you're conscious before it was subconscious. Now you're conscious. You're consciously tapping into it. So here are signs of awakening. An increased empathy and intuition. You find yourself listening to less to what people say and, and more to the feeling or attentions behind the words or actions. You begin to trust your intuition and listen to your soul when it speaks. So you learn to, be, to trust your intuition and listen to your soul when it speaks. You're tapping into that divineness that is you. Step two, feeling drawn to nature. Yes, this happened to me, guys. I was a city guy. And then I'm like, man, I miss being out in the woods or putting my, walking on the ocean. You may want to unplug from the matrix and technology. You want to sit by a tree or walk on a sandy beach. You might, you might just want to sit outside and absorb the sunlight. And one of the coolest things about being drawn to nature is grounding or earthing. And that is putting your bare feet to the earth. And making that electrical connection between Mother Gaia or the earth. You know, face it, let's face it, a lot of us, we're disconnected, of that, disconnected from that energy of the earth because we wear rubber shoes. And there's scientifically proven that there's an electrical connection when we put our feet barefooted to the earth there is a connection there you can measure it on a device step three an aversion to negative people or behaviors you find yourself less interested in gossip pettiness or or the judgment of others like it turns you off when people start talking like gossiping about others or putting others down or joking about others or being petty or even being greedy or being judgmental like that as you awaken you start seeing through those masks and you're like man i don't want to resonate with this i want to resonate with positivity and love and not negativity or any form of something that could hurt others you start removing toxic and negative people out of your life that means you start removing toxic people you stop being placing yourself in toxic environments and you start learning to surround yourself with positivity. Step four. A desire for a, a united community. You seem more drained by the us versus them arguments or energies or consciousness. Be it political, sports, or natural nationalism, radical divine divineness. Like I stated earlier that thousands for thousands and hundreds of years we certain uh, uh, people or structures have pinned us against each other and as you awaken you start being like hey I don't want to be part of the great divide but I want to be a part of the great unite uniting of people or, or the uniting of humanity instead of attacking those people because of the stuff the beliefs and ideas that you disagree with let's come together as and as one people with the stuff that we can't resonate with. You begin to view everyone or humanity as one. That we're all connected. Yes. That that we're all one. There's a law. There's even a universal law called the, the law of oneness. And then I talk about the law of oneness and the universal laws in one of the episodes on this channel. So check it out. Step five. Feeling and believing that all life is sacred. We begin to value all, all life and look at life as all sacred. You may find yourself taking a small bug taking taking small bugs outside to live and 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 so that they can perform their purpose. I've found this in me. I used to like I have a phobia of spiders or or bugs in general or cre cr uh, crawling creatures. And when I was younger, I would just kill them, you know, like uh, if I see the spider, I would kill it. Now, I try my best not to hurt or injure any type of creature. I try to let it live, you know, what, you know, imagine yourself as a spider and that 
and you're walking around, you're, you're, you know, you're small and everything, you're doing your thing and a giant comes and crushes you for no reason except for it doesn't like you. You got to learn to view the world in a different, different way. And when you begin to walk the spiritual path, you change your, you start changing your perspective. So all life is sacred. You know, and like me, I, and some people say, if you know, for one of the things like they say, oh, you eat meat. Yes, I eat meat. I like my steak. I like my hamburgers. But I give thanks and appreciate that the, there was a life taken to give me life, to their energy to transfer it into, to, so that I could have energy. And I'm thankful for that and grateful for that. You know, so don't put me down because I, I, it's not my fault that I was raised in a culture that was a, a meat and potato type culture. You know, and I'm still working on trying to eat healthy all the time to eat more plants and vegetables. It's a process. Step six, your consciousness feels renewed. You feel like you're walking on cloud nine. There's an inner power that you're tapping into. You begin to look back on your own life memories as only options of your experience versus a concrete reality. You realize you realize now that you are, your entire life experience can be different based on the consciousness you hold. You begin to view your life with your spiritual eyes and spiritual understanding. You begin to look at your life through a whole new perspective. So when you start like with the, raising your consciousness and your awareness, you start looking at everything, all the things that happen in your life, and you start seeing like, hey, I could have done this differently. I could have reacted to this situation differently. Instead of looking at it as a sad, negative, depressing moment, you can look at it as, hey, I learned a lot and it helped me grow. And so you start changing things. You start, like I like to say, when you begin to awaken spiritually, you begin to see things with your spiritual eyes. Are you with your third eye, your your inner sight, your sight with through the Holy Spirit? Step seven, you begin to live in the moment. You begin to stop letting your fears, doubts hold you back in life. Instead of letting your fear hold you back, you start living a life again, making every minute of your life meaningful and purposeful. Step eight, increased inner peace. You don't mind a quiet time or a quiet time or a long time. You now tend to shut off the TV and social media. You put down your phone. You begin to pray or take up a meditation practice. And you, because you become more spiritual, you learn that you're tapping into the power within you so no outside forces can affect you. Like, my friends, I have a lot of, because now that I'm a social influencer or whatever you call it, and that I'm putting my information out there, I have people that attack me, you know, and... I don't let that affect me and I stay rooted in my inner peace because I know that I'm trusting my intuition. I'm trusting my soul or my, or the Holy Spirit within me. So I know that I'll be okay. And so I'm not going to let others uh, mess with my peace. So here's step nine. Compassion and positivity surges through you. And this is one of the biggest things when I started became, becoming uh walking the path of spirituality and working on self-mastery, I started working on compassion and the positivity. And now I'm very compassionate with almost all the activities and things that I do and even the thoughts that I think. Rather than competing or wanting to ill will for another, you hope we all will make it and all are happy because in reality, we are all connected. You begin to live by the golden rule. I love that rule. That's why I repeat it. Do what to others as you'd want them to do unto you. Let me repeat that. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. We must learn to incorporate that into our beingness. That every thought and action guide be, be guided by that golden rule. Also, you embody love and treat everyone in a loving manner. Step 10. Enhance authenticity. Being your authentic self. In life, from, from growing up, we've we're taught to put on these masks and different with their, hanging out with certain people. We put on this mask. Then we hang out with this person or this group. We put on this mask, and we don't we don't stay we don't stay being our true selves. And that because out of fear, because hey, this person knew that I believed, 
I thought a certain way, like like doesn't go against with them, then they would hate me for it, and I don't want them to hate me for it. So I put I pretend to think and believe like they do. When you walk the spiritual path, you learn to shed the masks of life that you learn to put on, and just be you, be your authentic self. You need less attention in crowds, public situations, or around others. You need less attention. Rather, you were content to watch, assist, and help others to see their own truth and beauty. You stay rooted and grounded. You don't let other outside factors steer you off course. You don't let others affect your happiness or positivity. Instead, you share your happiness and positivity with others. You share your love light with others. That's crucial, sharing your love light with others for what what animates us our soul is love light is the divineness my friends i hope you found this video helpful uh i have so i have i, I ask you and i plead with those who watch this and may make, make it to this part to share my content if it resonates with your soul let's help awaken people and how I help awaken people is by you helping awaken people. So you like and find my information and then you share it with others. You subscribe to my channel so that I can grow. Right now there is so a certain, uh, I don't even know how to say because I got to watch what I say. There are certain factors or certain uh, tech like moguls or whatever you want to say it purposely like blocking my information from reaching out and and how I know this is some of my content, either on my Instagram or my YouTube, so uh, like one of my platforms, I reach thousands and thousands of people. And then on a certain platform, I reach, it says the, on the, the, the views, uh, it'd be, oh, you reach five. How can I, you know, like I reach thousands of people and people are aware, thousands of people are aware of my content. And then on another platform, only four or five. It, it's, you know, and then sometimes like I'll click on something, I'll say zero views. But then I, or not, well, I don't click on it. And like when a minute pops up, says zero views. The minute I click on it, there's views. So there's some shadiness going on. So it would help if you, by supporting me, it will be a big help if you help share my content with others. So I thank you guys. And I want to share love and light. And I wish you the bless, wish you the best. The God bless you and amen. And like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys.